Welcome back to Cause Talk Radio, another true story from True Story FM. I'm your host, Megan Strand with Engage for Good. You can find full show notes and additional resources for today's episode at engageforgood.com. Hello, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Cause Talk Radio. I'm Megan Strand, Communications Director with Engage for Good, and I'm very excited to be joined by the fabulous Allie Murphy, Marketing and Engagement Manager, also with Engage for Good. Hey, Allie. Hey, Megan. How are you today? Apparently, it's a fabulous kind of day because I think I've already said that word three times, but... Well, it is one of your favorite words. With you. <laughs> so, I have a really important question for you. I understand you do some volunteering outside of work. What do you What do you do? I do. I am a CASA volunteer, so I work with kids that are in dependency and advocate for them in front of the court and keep in touch in touch with them. It's the best volunteer job ever. It Why are you asking me that? Song. Wait, do you volunteer? I do. Well, so I volunteered at an animal shelter for a long time, which I loved. But right now, given it's virtual world, I volunteer with Aspire through the state of Oregon, and I mentor four high school oh, students in figuring out what they want to do after high school and charting a plan to get there. I like it. That's such a cool... Look at us. We're so charitable and volunteerish. I love it. Why are we talking about this? That's a good question. <laughs> well, it might have something to do with the fact that the two people that are going to join us in a couple minutes have an employee engagement slash virtual volunteering program. Oh, yes, that's right. Well, I'm very, very excited to talk to our guest today. Um, We are going to be speaking with Julie Klugage, who is co-founder and executive director of Team for Tech, which is a new organization I just recently learned about. Thank you, Dave Stangus. Um, As well as Michelle Mann, who is senior manager of global philanthropy and employee engagement with NetApp. We're going to talk about a um, employee volunteer program that they have done together. So shall we get right into the interview? Yeah, let's dive in. Well, hello, Michelle and Julie, and welcome to Cause Talk Radio. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Hi, Allie. Hi, Megan. Well, Julie, would you start us off today by telling us just a little bit about Team for Tech? Yes, I would love to. Team for Tech is a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to advance the quality of education for underserved learners around the world through technology solutions and capacity building. We're based in Silicon Valley, but we partner with education-focused NGOs all around the world. Uh, We started our work in 2013, and since then, we've been able to reach over 85,000 learners through our support of 30 nonprofit organizations across 19 countries. Um, And how we do this work is kind of the exciting part. We partner with uh, companies who provide their employees as volunteers, and they also provide financial sponsorship for our projects. We train the employee volunteers in a human-centered design approach that builds skills that they can use on the pro bono consulting project and then also back in their day job. Michelle, same question to you. Tell us a little bit about NetApp and your role there. Sure. NetApp is a tech company based in Silicon Valley. Um, We are a cloud data storage company. We have about 10,000 employees around the world. And my role is to, you know, inspire, support, enable our employees to make the change in the world that they want to see. Um, so we're focused on volunteering and giving back um, through matching programs and donations and, and this exciting new project with Team for Tech. Julie, can you t- uh, give us a little bit of background? When did your partnership with NetApp begin and what did it look like when it first started? Yeah, so this has been our first year working with NetApp. Super exciting. Uh, we've done two projects. One is supporting an NGO called World Reader on their digital reading project in Ghana. And the second project is supporting a STEM school for girls based just outside of Kigali in Rwanda. Um, called the Gashora Girls Academy for Science and Technology. And so we've had about 10 or 11 NetApp employees on each of those projects. And um, we've helped these NGOs sort of make a digital pivot when faced with all the challenges of COVID-19, but also just advance their uh, projects around technology-focused education solutions. Um, Awesome. Yeah. And I just wanted to say, you know, we were so excited to start with NetApp. Um, Our initial plan was to go on site uh, on these projects. But then when COVID hit, 
uh, we pivoted overnight and made them virtual. And so it's been uh, an amazing opportunity for us to learn how to do that well, um, while having great results for these two nonprofits. Definitely been a lot of changes in the last year, and I'm excited to talk about the pivot in just a little bit. Before we do that, Michelle, can you talk about why NetApp initially selected Team for Tech as an employee engagement partner and what that looked like for you? Sure. Um, NetApp has a really um, long history um, and tradition of volunteering. We have 40 hours of volunteer time, paid time off. So that program was going along just great. Um, a lot of people taking part of it. Um, but I'm in HR and um, our organization is really focused on um, how do we create leaders at every level of the organization? And so we were kind of looking for a non-traditional career development opportunity. Um, of course, Team for Tech provides that. Um, so yeah, we were, we were looking to do something different. And I had heard about Julie's program for many, many years and all the successes that she's had. So it just felt like it was a great way to integrate social impact with leadership development. Well, Jill, you made reference to this a little bit earlier, um, but it sounds like you guys have had to pivot a little bit, this partnership. You were going to maybe go to Ghana, bring some NetApp employees there, and then this global pandemic hit. So would you tell us a little bit about how you've been able to pivot your programs and what those employee volunteer programs are looking like right now? Right. So yeah, for the first seven years of our operations, we had um, a hybrid model where we would do remote training and preparation for eight weeks. Uh, with the employee volunteers. And then we would go on site typically for two weeks at a time um, to do training and technology implementation with our NGO partners. Um, and, you know, 2020 was shaping up to be our biggest year ever of those types of on site projects. And then, you know, February and March came and all of a sudden we had to rethink everything. And, um, you know, probably even more important, our sector, our focus was sort of the crucible of impact of COVID-19. I mean, over 90% of students around the world could no longer access their education program. So it was urgent and critical that we figure out a solution. And so we just started by saying in March, you know what, we're going to drop everything and launch um, emergency response projects. So we put out a call to all of our nonprofit partners and said, you know, how can we help you? What urgent technical solution do you need right now so that you can conti continue delivering your, your programs? Um, and so we had about eight of them step up right away and said, yeah, we have these urgent needs. And so we use that as an opportunity to pilot a new format of our program where we launched these uh, six-week emergency response projects and help them come up with technical solutions. Um, and we learned a lot from that. We learned that, you know, we were able to meet their needs effectively. And also we learned that it was rewarding for these employees, like all of us who were feeling sort of, you know, paralyzed this year, like, how can I help? What can I do besides just reading all this bad news? Um, and so that brought a lot of learning to, you know, what we were able to do with NetApp when we launched these strategic um, 10 week projects uh, in, uh, focused on Ghana and also Rwanda. I've been so inspired by the pivots and the innovation that people have had to figure out on the fly to some extent because of COVID. Michelle, you recently wrapped up a volunteer activity with 11 employees that probably normally would have been in person and is focused on students in Ghana. Would you share a little bit about that experience? Sure. I, I you know, when we when we started working with Team for Tech and we were going to be in country, um, you know, everyone was very excited. I personally was so excited. And then COVID, and then COVID hit and we're like, should we wait? And then we had lots of discussions with Julie and the team about, you know, how long would we have to wait? We wouldn't know when, you know, when was the right time when this was going to be. So we said, okay. We can't stop. We just have to go forward. So, yes, the um, the uh, Ghana team just finished, but the Rwanda team is almost done. And the experience that the employees had has just been remarkable. Um, the best thing to happen to them in 2020 is what many of them have told me. So um, despite the being on Zoom um, uh, and not being together, they still had a wonderful experience, uh, both personally and professionally. I really give you guys a lot of credit, Michelle, for moving forward with that volunteer activity because, you know, you very easily could have been like, well, 
guess we'll do that in 2022. You know, I mean, so kudos to you at NetApp for continuing to push forward with that program. I mean, it definitely takes a commitment probably to kind of dive into the unknown. You know, you you found Team for Tech because you heard all these great things about their in-person volunteer experience and now you, you had to pivot. So I love that. Well, the employees have, I just add that, you know, it's been a really beautiful experience for them. And Team for Tech offers um, us to look at the evaluations of the program and the stories that our employees are telling us um, about the change is that they seen in themselves are really, really beautiful. I want to dive into that a little bit more because I do think that that is a really important learning. So, Julie, as Michelle said, you know, these employees are still really engaged, even though we're all on Zoom all day, every day. We're sick of it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick of being online all day, every day. Um, but they were still saying that they felt engaged with these projects. So how is that possible? Like, what have you guys, what secret sauce are you do- doing? What have you learned about virtual engagement that's been valuable? Like, what can you share with our listeners? Yeah, I mean, and to be honest, we were worried about it. You know, you keep hearing about Zoom fatigue everywhere. And so, Absolutely. yeah, we, we were concerned. But um, what we learned is that when you bring people together in a meaningful way, you know, doing really purpose-filled work, uh, even with Zoom, it becomes an opportunity to form these, you know, deep connections with your colleagues around the world that, you never would have had even in normal times and especially not in, you know, quarantine times, would you be able to make those connections? And so, you know, that's what we heard back from the employees was, wow, this was like the one call that I really look forward to every week because, you know, we've made such, you know, tight uh, connections and bonds and we're able to be authentic and vulnerable. Um, You know, I just loved towards the end of the Ghana project with the NetApp employees, they made a joke that somebody was always crying on every call because it was so meaningful and, you know, emotional for them. And so um, it was, it was really beautiful to see that the deep connections they made with each other and then across the the employee volunteers and with the the nonprofit client on these projects and, you know, the, the very impactful work they were able to do. So did you guys do anything specifically to foster that or was it just, you know, by design of the, of the projects that you do, was it just the coming together to help somebody else you know, was it just that dynamic that made it so engaging? Or did you guys do anything specifically to kind of foster that sense of community? Yeah, I mean, we have a very intentional curriculum that's all based on human-centered design, which starts with um, deep customer empathy. And so um, we we have, uh, you know, an intentional scaffolding in all of our calls where we're doing trust-building exercises, you know, trying to get to know each other as teammates and also across the team and with the nonprofit clients. So um, we think it's really important to to take the time to build those trusting relationships if you're going to do meaningful work, even even more important if you're in a virtual context. So um, we really do carve that out. And then we um, have short articles and videos that we watch each week about building empathy, you know, building trust across the team. And we take time out for reflections based on that. So I think that that has a lot to do with it. I would add that, you know, people were um, drawn to it. Employees were drawn to it because they wanted to give their skills um, to the particular project. But what they learned is they got so much more out than what they gave. So they never imagined that it would be as valuable to them personally and, um, and professionally as it was just to, you know, be able to give back um, their skill set. So uh, it really remarkable experience. And I would say that the, the, you know, the development part, the um, engaging, the changed mindset, all the, um, all the aspects of leadership that um, their curriculum covers um, is gosh, maybe even more important than the project that they, you know, did for, uh, for the NGO partners. I love that. And I think a lot of people, or at least 
a good portion when they go into a volunteering opportunity, they're thinking about how they can contribute. And not everybody thinks about how much they're going to learn in the process. And it sounds like your employees really took that piece to heart. Um, And so I'm curious about how this particular engagement fits into other employee engagement activities that you're doing at NetApp. It sounds like this was kind of a subset of 11 people, which is a pretty small group. Are there ways to take that experience and their experience and story and share that with a wider community? Yes, there are ways, and we want to increase the number of projects that we do next year and the number of people that get to participate. So um, it'll always be a small, hands-on kind of deep experience um, in the bon- in the volunteer sense. Um, um, but I think there's a lot of ways. I mean, the employee takes back to their own department the experience that they have, the learnings that they um, they got out of it. Um, the managers share with each other and the rest of the team, um, you know, what they did. The employees are writing blogs and storytelling there, you know, about um, Team Protect experiences. So, you know, it's one piece of our overall volunteer and social impact work. Um, it's just a, a really deep experience. And I think that, you know, it's possible that um, this will help us drive to a more skills-based um, volunteering approach in the future. I love that. And I definitely think that's the trend is, you know, doing these deeper volunteer experiences, you know, the done in the days are in, in done in a day. Those experiences are fantastic and you can engage a lot more people, but it's not, it's not the same. So it's interesting to see that you've kind of embraced that as well, Michelle. Well, Julie, what would you say uh, the high points of transitioning to a virtual experience have been for you? Like, are there things you're going to keep? Are you going to keep doing virtual volunteering moving forward if there are companies who can't send employees overseas? Like, what do you know? Have you have you pulled out your crystal ball to decide what you're going to keep moving forward? Yes. I mean, we definitely are going to keep doing the virtual projects. And, and beyond just, you know, in person or virtual, we launched, you know, three different versions of our, of our programs this year in response to this urgent need. So, We used to just have the long term, you know, 10 to 12 week strategic pro bono consulting projects. Now we have these, you know, quick response four to six week projects that are focused on a specific technical need. And we've also launched uh, design for impact workshops where we can, um, you know, prototype solutions, you know, responding to a particular question that one of our nonprofit partners um, might be facing. So I feel like this year has really just, you know, pushed us out of our comfort zone, forced us to accelerate, you know, that change. And, you know, 100%, we will keep doing it going forward. We actually have been able to reach so many more nonprofits and also get so many more employee volunteers involved who might not have been able to travel, you know, but were able to do a virtual project. So it's funny that, you know, we're talking today, we just had a staff meeting where where we were all saying, you know, what are we grateful for from 2020? And it's that, that, you know, it, it forced us to accelerate these changes that have turned out to be, you know, good for both sides. It's awesome. It's good to know that your model works online as well. It sounds like that's the testament to the strength of your program that you, you know, had a program that could translate to a virtual one and, you know, expand and pivot the way that you have. So, Michelle, same question to you. What have you personally learned about engaging employees in this virtual environment that maybe will serve you going forward into 2021 and beyond that. It sounds like you've learned a lot of stuff along the way. It's hard work, virtual volunteering. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think the key is to have great partners. Um, so, you know, mm-hmm. this this opportunity in the end, really, you know, we didn't have to find the budget for travel, which would have been hard. You know, we can go um, in the future with more projects um, and you know, reach more people without having to, you know, go around with a tin cup and, and, um, beg for the, the travel funds, which are always the hardest to get. Um, and, and I think it also, um, has helped us see that, you know, we need to partner very closely with NGOs, um, with more organizations to build, um, valuable experiences, uh, virtual volunteering, there's, you know, some really good things. And then there's some not so great projects that don't really engage and inspire employees. So we have to be very careful about picking those um, next year. And the other thing that we learned is that, you know, having these people from all over the world working together, we used to do things by regions. 
and sites. And now we don't have to do that. And so we're expanding a lot more of our um, programs, lunch and learns and all kinds of other communications um, programs uh, to the whole country, the whole company, the whole, you know, different regions instead of just focusing down on one particular site. So um, it's really been a, actually kind of a good thing. Yeah, there's a lot of good benefits that have come out of this. I hope that one of the things that comes out of this too is just that more employees you know, understand that those volunteering and engagement opportunities are accessible to them because, you know, you've now, the two of you are now experts at virtual and volunteering. And so, you know, it's probably in front of them a lot more often. And quite frankly, they probably have less to do outside of their normal nine to five and are looking for unique, different activities. And I would imagine that this is one of them. So what a fantastic partnership, Michelle and Julie. Thank you so much for joining Alia and myself on this episode of Cause Talk Radio. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for having us. Julie, if people want to learn more about Team for Tech online, how might they do that? Please come visit us, teamfortech.org. It's the number four. Um, and we have so many nonprofit partners around the world who need help accelerating their education program and pivoting to a, a virtual reality. So please come find us. We have many projects that need your support. And Michelle, same to you. Where can people learn more about NetApp's social impact projects online if they'd like to do that? Yeah, we have an ESG page on netapp.com. Uh, you can find out more information there and reach out to me directly. Well, that was a fascinating program. It's really neat. And I feel like in today's day and age, having impressive employee engagement programs or ways to engage your employees and keep them interested at work, especially in a time of COVID, is so important. And I think they did a really good job of that. Yeah, I think they did too. And I think Julie was a little bit modest in, <laughs> you know, talking about just how much time and effort they had front loaded mm -hmm. into their in-person volunteering engagements to make them really well structured and like you know all of that background stuff that I think probably as nonprofits are like hurrying to create employee engagement right. programs probably skip over like they really have they've really done that work and I so I think when they had to pivot to virtual you know, it didn't sound like they did anything like super different than what they normally do. They already had the foundation. They had, yeah, they had all the strong pieces and it just happened to translate well to to virtual engagements. So I think that's a, a really interesting lesson learned is just that, you know, if you have really strong programs and you've worked on the how do you build trust and what's the empathy piece mm -hmm. and the whole human design, all that human design stuff, you know, I think if those things are in place, if that plays well in person. It probably plays a little better in person, but it also plays well on Zoom. Because if you've got people that are working on Zoom all day long and they still want to go to their volunteering thing after work, mm -hmm. like that's says a lot. And I, if I understood correctly, it sounds like the NetApp, NetApp employees aren't all from the same department. So they didn't all know each other beforehand, which yeah. means that team building and the human design process and all of the back work that Team protected is even more important. And I read through, I think you did too, some of the blog posts from employees afterwards. Yeah. They talk about it as a life-changing experience or as the highlight of 2020. And that's Which huge. is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. thought it was For a great For a Zoom podcast. experience. Yeah. Right. No. I thought it no, was I love it. And I, I do think that whole that whole skilled volunteering piece where you're not, you know, if you aren't a house painter and you're painting a house, that's, you know, that feels good. But it's not the same as like mm -hmm. being an accountant and, you know, really sharing your skill with somebody who could use those accounting skills. You know, that whole skilled volunteerism piece, I think, is really powerful. And right. if you're able to translate that, even virtually, you know, that's still, you're like, hey, we're helping these people in Ghana that need this, whatever the technology, you know, challenges. I kind of wish we had asked them what some of the technology challenges were, because I think it was spelled out in some of those posts, but we didn't actually. Well, one of them that was interesting is that I think it's something about mobile data. There's a, there's a program that a lot of them use that reduces the amount of data you use by like 90%. So all mm. of the tech apps, et cetera, have to fit into that model so that you're using a lot less data than what we use over here in the States. I'm sure they do a better job of explaining it, but it was something like that. Interesting. Good job, Allie. You did your homework. <laughs> you know, like sometimes you see these case studies and you're like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then you really dig into it and you're like, oh, that is so interesting. You know, How did I they feel do like, it? Yep. Yeah. No, I think that it's always interesting to kind of dig behind the scenes a little bit and hear 
you know, more about the the process and the strategy and how all of these things were conceived and, and, you know, all the backstory, I think is so fascinating. So that's why we do Cause Talk Radio. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, thank you, Allie. I'm sure I will be connecting with you very soon and we'll be seeing your face again on a upcoming episode of Cause Talk Radio. Well, you'll see my face. Our listeners will not. But thanks for joining us. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye.